Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. On this episode, we talk with Jeffrey Goldstein. He is managing director at Q Associates, a Microsoft partner, and he is also the chair of the Americas for the IAMCP, which means he is uh, overseeing a whole range of uh, members in various countries, and this is a really a busy time for them. We are right on the eve of Inspire 2019, Microsoft's annual partner event, and IAMCP will have a large presence there as usual. It's their 25th anniversary year. Uh, Jeffrey talks to me about some of the IAMCP plans for Inspire, some of the discussions that uh, his members are having both internally and with Microsoft, and what he expects uh, from the Inspire event. All right, Jeffrey Goldstein, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me today. Hello, thank you. And uh, I thought this would be a a really great time to um, have a conversation with you uh, and record it. I mean, we've talked before, but um, because of sort of the multiple interesting and very relevant roles um, that you play in the Microsoft channel uh, at this particular time, which is kind of the eve of uh, the upcoming Inspire 2019 event. Um, for folks who don't know you, maybe could you talk about um, some of the, the 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 hats you wear, the jobs you do? Sure, absolutely, not a problem. So, yeah, so I am uh, currently the uh, president of the uh, IAMCP Americas, which is the International Association for uh, Microsoft uh, Channel Partners. So that includes the IAMCP for not only the U.S., but also Canada and uh, Latin America. So basically, we are a uh, not-for-profit uh, organization focused on the uh, uh, partners, the Microsoft partners, and the Microsoft, you know, channel and uh, learn, connect, and uh, grow is our uh, mantra. All right, excellent. And uh, when you're not um, focused on sort of two continents, <laughs> I guess you'd say, um, <laughs> you are also a Microsoft partner yourself, right? Yes, correct. So I am the uh, managing director for uh, Q Associates. We are a Microsoft Gold certified ERP partner with locations in New York, London, and Hong Kong. And that is my full-time position. All right. Excellent. And um, like I said, with Inspire coming up uh, in just a few days here, um, what have you been up to uh, in your in your role with IAMCP? Um, can you give a little overview of, of what the what the the presence is going to be, what maybe your uh, outlook is for the event? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for most of you who, um, uh, do, well, you may or may not know, uh, the IEMCP is celebrating their 25th year uh, anniversary, and we're going to have a big celebration at the Microsoft Inspire uh, conference, and that will take place on July 14th at uh, 7.30 uh, p.m. And if you'd like to attend, you can uh, register on the IAMCP uh, website. So it simply is uh, IAMCP.org. And it will take place at uh, Ariel, which is at Mandalay Bay from uh, 7.30 to 10.30. And it'll be immediately after the uh, welcome reception at the uh, at the Expo Center in the Mandalay, uh, at the Mandalay uh, Bay Conference Center. So that will um, uh, kick off our, our, our celebrations, but actually, you know, prior to that, we have several things going on, which include our uh, Americas and International Board of Directors meetings, will take, which will take place on uh, both uh, Saturday, uh, July 13th and uh, uh, 14th in uh, lead up to the uh, uh, conference. And then we will be very active at the uh, welcome reception at Mandalay Bay in the Expo Hall. And we're going to kick it off with a um, uh, an all-members hands-on uh, meeting at the IAMCP booth in the uh, Expo Hall. So as I mentioned before, immediately after that at 7.30 p.m., we're going to be having a 25th year anniversary celebration uh, party. And uh, you can on the IAMCP site. If you would like to attend, you must be uh, registered for the conference and have a conference uh, conference badge in order to be able to attend. But there will be several very high profile uh, Microsoft uh, executives that will be in attendance for this uh, event. So we'll kick things off immediately on uh, July 14th. That is the uh, Sunday uh, leading up to the uh, conference. And then every day thereafter, we will have a uh, you know, several events that will be uh, going on. Uh, one of the highlights will be the IAMCP executive uh, roundtable meetings, uh, which are also listed on our website, which will be headed up by uh, Brad Smith, chief legal officer and uh, president of uh, Microsoft. 
Also having roundtable presentations will be Gabriella Schuster, David Willis, and several other you know, Microsoft uh, executives. So if you're an IEMCP member and you'd like to attend uh, two of these roundtable uh, sessions, you are welcome to uh, register on the IEMCP uh, you know, website and we're limiting everyone to two uh, sessions. So like I mentioned, uh, Gabriella Schuster will be there, Brad Smith, Karen Fazio, Dave Willis, David Smith, uh, Gretchen O'Hare, uh, Justin Slagle, Melanie Goss, uh, Katie Swigley, um, Rajiv will be there representing uh, India. Uh, we will have Lindsay Ray, who will be representing uh, DNI, which is very hot right now uh, for Microsoft. Uh, Brett Combast, who everybody knows, will uh, also be there, and uh, also uh, representatives from uh, other countries. So that's a uh, huge benefit for members of the uh, IAMCP to be able to attend these executive roundtables and then to hear one-on-one -on -one from these, uh, you know, executives, you know, what is uh, hot. In fact, I had the opportunity two weeks ago in Seattle to uh, attend the meeting with Gabriella Schuster, an IAMCP meeting, where she did a rehearsal for her Corno presentation that she will be giving at the, uh, you know, at the Inspire conference. And it was very interesting to hear, you know, what her initiatives are for the uh, partners. And she will be speaking about, you know, the top four things that they want partners to focus on, which include <clears throat> number one, Microsoft Teams. Uh, Power Apps, uh, Azure, and uh, migration of uh, 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 products that are end of life, <laughs> migrating those to Azure, and also data migration, which includes artificial intelligence and uh, you know analytics. So we're looking forward to Gabriella's uh, keynote presentation. Uh, I should say core note, you know, presentation, which will uh, be coming up. But uh, go to the IAMCP website. We've also created a another website called IAMCPinspire.org, and that'll have a list of all of our events. So those are the uh, highlights. One other one that I do want to mention is that we will be um, also holding our uh, Prometheus and P2P award ceremony on July 16th at uh, 4 p.m., and that will also be in the Hall, and that will be on one of the uh, one of the main stages, and uh, we will be giving awards out to um, uh, Microsoft people in each region who have been very supportive of the IAMCP, and also to partners who really exemplified and have exceeded uh, what is expected of them uh, regarding uh, partnering. So that's um, what we will be doing, and we will be very active at the uh, Inspire conference. I imagine it's a for uh, for returning uh, attendees at Inspire and 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 longtime IAMCP members at Inspire uh, and and WPC before it must be really one of the the key times of the year to really get themselves in front of some of the I mean that, that list of Microsoft representation um, at your uh, at, at IAMCP focused sessions and, and, and meetings is really impressive and must be a great opportunity for, the, for members and, and Inspire attendees to kind of not only hear from Microsoft, but also um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bit more dialogue, I would say, right, in some of these, um, these events than in sort of the official in, other, other Inspire breakouts or, uh, you know, presentations that, that are taking place, right? Yeah, so these sessions, that, that's a great point. These sessions are very interactive. So typically what will happen, especially with Gabriella Schuster, we'll introduce her, we'll talk about what her key initiatives are, and we'll ask her to uh, reinforce that or support that so that we know you know, what she's looking for from the uh, partners and the partner community. And we typically say, you know, Gabriella, you know, we're here to help you. How can we, you know, help you? you know, we understand that, for example, your initiatives are, you know, getting everybody on the Teams platform and promoting Teams and doing development on Teams, you know, pushing out Power Apps and doing development on, you know, Power Apps, continuing our uh, migrations to, you know, Azure and also, you know, focusing on analytics and AI, you know, can you expand upon that? So she'll expand on that and then she'll just open it up for Q&A. So we'll have about, uh, you know, 30 minutes of, uh, you know, Q&A and Gabriella it doesn't typically come in with a, you know, prepared you know, presentation. She's there looking for feedback from the, you know, partners as the IEMCP 
is a representation of the uh, of the full channel, and we'll have most of our higher profile, you know, partners attending these executive roundtable meetings. Yeah, I, I haven't been to these. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever been to it back when it was WPC, and I'm still attending it. Um, uh, IAMCP sessions uh, very often, but any opportunity to hear Microsoft uh, executives speak, sort of. Um, off the cuff when they're when they don't have a uh, you know a teleprompter or they don't have a rehearsed you know PowerPoint deck to, to speak to um, is is always such a great opportunity because you get to hear sort of who they are as 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 people and decision makers um, a lot more clearly and uh, especially how they handle questions because partners can throw some very tough questions at at Microsoft when uh, when they have something gnawing at them um, I would say and I imagine this year is no different. Oh, no. And they're very open to, uh, you know, they're very open to feedback. In fact, when I was in Seattle and uh, saw Gabriella do her rehearsal for her core note, you know, presentation, I sent her an email follow up and I actually sent her a recommendation for something that she should add to her, you know, keynote presentation. And she actually responded to me and said, you know, thank you for the feedback. We'll take it under, you know, consideration. So that's the type of relationship that the IAMCP has with the, you know, executives. And we've had this going back, you know, further. So when I first started with the IAMCP, I remember meeting uh, Allison, Phil Sorgen, John Roskell, and having, uh, you know, small roundtable events where we would, um, uh, you know, understand what their um, initiatives are, and they would be looking for feedback from the, uh, from the partners. What do you think some of the, uh, I mean, you've, you've touched on some of the product um, areas that obviously are going to be, uh, that Microsoft has, has already made priority, and you, uh, it's really interesting to hear you um, talk about some of those uh, areas that, that you expect, uh, you know, Gabriella, for example, that, to, to, uh, to dive into in her, in her core note. Um, but uh, what are some of the other things you expect partners to come to the event asking about. I'll just tell you offhand. I mean, the thing that kind of is top of my mind right now, just in terms of current events and listening to chatter, is sort of the what I think partners are, are um, perceiving as sort of a, a, an increased pressure on on growth and scale. Um, that's just one that comes to my mind. Are there others that that you are expecting people to come ready to talk about? Sure. So obviously the one that you brought up uh, in terms of uh, growth and scale is something that um, uh, we expect to discuss with, uh, you know, Microsoft and, uh, you know, we're prepared to, you know, handle that. And we are doing things, you know, within the uh, within the IAMCP, you know, to promote it. So as a uh, Microsoft Dynamics uh, partner, I uh, attended the uh, executive partner briefing in Redmond, which was originally scheduled for February and then was held in, uh, you know, April. And one of the things that they did mention is that they're looking for non-Microsoft Dynamics partners to uh, uh, to sell Microsoft uh, Dynamics, uh, you know, products. So most partners are not equipped, uh, non-Microsoft uh, Dynamics partners are not equipped to um, not only implement and support Microsoft Dynamics, you know, but even to, you know, sell it. So uh, through the IAMCP, through P2P partnering, we're, we are having our Microsoft Dynamics partners help the non-Dynamics partners sell, support, and implement, you know, Microsoft Dynamics you know, products and, uh, you know, services. So obviously the uh, partners who were selling Office and Office 365 were introduced to CSP at uh, the very beginning, much before the Microsoft Dynamics partners, and they have a huge client base that they can go back to and uh, resell them, you know, Microsoft Dynamics, uh, you know, products. So we are partnering our Dynamics partners with our office partners so that we can work together uh, as uh, partners to go back to our customers and sell them more products and services, you know, within the Microsoft CSP solutions. Um, in, in, in talking to you before before today, um, that's one of the things that struck me about, about your approach to IAMCP is this was what you're just talking about, this, um, you know, really championing the, the partner to partner, um, you know, dynamic, if you will. Uh, it sounds like that's really been one of your focus uh, focus areas um, as the as the chair of uh, of the organization for the Americas. Um, would you say that's a change of a, of approach that sort of something that's sort of your signature uh, approach, or is that something that IAMCP's always done well? 
Well, that that's always been the approach of the IAMCP, but we're just emphasizing it more over the last, uh, you know, few years and really encouraging our partners to, you know, work together as partners and not as, uh, you know, competitors. And we're, we're starting to see or realize the benefits of that. So we are documenting that in uh, case studies and those are being published on our, you know, website and we are getting visibility, you know, with, uh, you know, with Microsoft and Microsoft is actually coming to us and they're telling us, you know, what programs they want us, uh, you know, to uh, promote in terms of, uh, you know, software and uh, CSP and some of the other things that I mentioned. And we are helping our partners ramp up and, and prepare for that as they make the uh, transition to uh, OCP and CSP. Do you think Microsoft is in favor of sort of having sort of larger uh larger CSPs, especially not like you were talking about with the Dynamics uh, versus not sort of non-Dynamics focused partners. Um, having these sort of larger partners with without Dynamics experience sort of just work with uh, a, a, a partners that do have Dynamics experience bringing them into deals? Or do you think they'd rather just have these larger partners swallow up uh, these other these other smaller partners and just, just deal with the big ones? Yeah, so that's a great that that's a great question. Um, you know, unfortunately, I can't answer that, but I can you know give you uh, you know my perception. So you know, within the IAMCP, you know, a lot of our uh, you know partners are um, you know SMB organizations, and they're not the larger organizations. Although we have many larger organizations that do belong, you know, to the IAMCP, and they, and they want to remain as SMB organizations. So they you know don't want to be acquired, and they don't want to merge. So or our job here is to help them uh, remain, uh, you know, remain viable, and to do that by, you know, working together as uh, partners so that we can offer all the new, you know, products and you know services, you know, through, um, you know, partner to partner, you know, networking. So I don't know if that yeah. you know, <laughs> I don't know if that answers answers your question, but uh, yeah, I kind of put you on the spot on that one. You can't you can't speak for Microsoft. I, I realize that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, I just I always feel this a bit of a, a bit of tension in in maybe the way that you know smaller partners, which I really do feel are, are a bit under under pressure to change and, and sort of adapt right now. Um, and, and and the thing that always comes through to me, just in, in my own observation, is the the focus on sort of customer success at at a very sort of personal level that 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 smaller Microsoft partners seem to really excel at and seem to be driven by, especially leaders of those companies. Um, and it's not to say that 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 bigger organizations don't care about it, but it's it's just harder to sort of track it, and and, and it's easier to it's easier for those companies to seem sort of uh, more impersonal, more you know, um, more like larger enterprises with with that operate in a different way. Um, and there's just, I feel like there's always a, a bit of tension there between those different types of firms, um, both between them and and maybe between the way Microsoft treats them. It's maybe that's just always the way it's been to some extent. Because for to say that Microsoft's only interested in larger organizations, I mean, we, we, I've been I've been hearing that from Microsoft executives for the last you know ten years, and I'm sure it's gone on much longer than that. That they want enterprise scale, um, you know, partners out there selling enterprise scale deals, right? Right. So and so here's the story. Microsoft doesn't have the resources to manage every single, you know, Microsoft, you know, partner because there's ten, th tens of thousands of, uh, you know, partners. And I don't know the exact, you know, number out there. So, you know, Microsoft manages, you know, the top maybe perhaps and maybe you would know this better than me, the top one percent of, you know, partners out in the, uh, you know, channel. So my feeling is that as the IEMCP, one of our commitments is to manage the unmanaged partners. And that's where we help Microsoft in, you know, getting these people, you know, through the Microsoft, you know, ecosystem. So, you know, Microsoft does have a website, uh, partner.microsoft.com, and it's fully self, you know, serving, but it doesn't always answer the, uh, you know, partners questions. And as new partners on board, or as, you know, partners look to uh, transition to, you know, the OCP model and to, you know, CSP, they sometimes need guidance, they need some, you know, handholding. 
And that's what the IAMCP does to make these organizations, you know, relevant and we help guide them in the right direction. So some people may not even know, you know, which competency is appropriate for them and we'll help, you know, direct them. And uh, even myself as our organization, you know, went through this, you know, transition, we learned, you know, from, you know, making mistakes and going through the process you know, what the right way is. So, you know, we, as part of the IEMCP, we put together best practices, we promote those and present those to our partners to help them, you know, navigate the, uh, you know, the Microsoft Ocean. Could you talk a little more about what some of those um, adaptations have been for, for Q Associates, um, some of the things you've observed in the channel and some of the decisions you've, you and your team have made to, um, you know, just adapt over the last uh, year or two? Sure, sure. So, you know, number one, and I, I mentioned this before, we're a Microsoft Gold ERP, you know, partner, and that competency doesn't exist, you know, within CSP, within the, uh, you know, within the cloud. So what we had to do was transition to a, uh, a competency that was most relevant, you know, for our, you know, for our organization. So the first of all, the selection of the competency, number one was, uh, you know, was a challenge in figuring out that. And we did go to Microsoft for recommendations and they provided, you know, excellent guidance in terms of, uh, you know, which would be the best fit, best fit for our organization. And then uh, secondly is, you know, CSP is a whole different, you know, business model, whereas we were um, designed to be able to sell on-premise, you know, business solutions and to be able to, uh, you know, support those on-premise solutions. Now we're moving to the uh, you know, to the cloud and transitioning. So most of our new, uh, uh, our new opportunities and new customers are all, you know, cloud, mo uh, cloud customers. And that model is very much different than the on-premise model. So we essentially have two businesses going on concurrently at the same time. And that is the new cloud CSP business. And then we have the existing on-premise business where we're currently supporting customers. We're doing upgrades for existing customers. We're selling them more products, new licenses. And then at the same time, we have new customers who are coming in, which are all cloud-based that don't require that level of attention. And they're looking to get um, um, onboarded, you know, within the cloud. And then we really have a, you know, a third you know, a, a third model, which is the transitioning of our existing customers, you know, to the cloud. So we have two or three business models that are going on and happening, you know, concurrently right now. And we have three separate teams working on those, uh, on those different models. And then even within those models, you know, then we have different products and services where we have, you know, specialists. So it's a, um, it, it, it's a very interesting you know, time. And we typically go through this uh, cyclical time every, you know, 10 years. And this is one of those, you know, uh, time periods where we're going through a transition and we have multiple business models that are uh, needing to be able to work concurrently at the same time, not only to support existing customers, but to onboard new customers, and then also to transition existing customers to the new business model. If I could change gears just a bit, I wanted to maybe get your thoughts on a couple of sort of the, the most current points of discussion out there right now, kind of leading into Inspire um, uh, to, to get back to that. So one is probably the most recent one, which is this uh, this change in plans for in, uh, internal use internal use rights. Am I saying IURs, right? Um, that, that was kind of, it's been sort of rattling around for the last week. Is that something um, you can provide any perspective on either either for your own firm or for what maybe the IAMCP members are, 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 are talking about uh, on that one? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Abs absolutely. So I knew you were going to bring that up. So I am prepared <laughs> for that. So uh, the way I understand it, and um, uh, we're still reading into this and uh, doing our analysis and uh, hoping to get clarification at the uh, Inspire conference, and I'm sure this will be you know, a topic. So, um, you know, the first one is beginning October 1st, uh, 2019, the product licenses that will be included will be related specifically to your uh, competency. So we went in, we did an evaluation on uh, what that would uh, mean to our business and what the cost would be to that. And that that's relatively, uh, you know, minor. We don't expect a major impact and that's on our uh, organization, you know, specifically. Uh, the second one, which I think is, uh, will have a little more of an impact on everyone is the announcement on July 1st, 2020, where they'll retire the internal use 
write licenses. So that obviously is going to impact us and will also impact uh, you know, other partners. And we're still trying to fully understand what that, uh, you know, what that means to us. But as part of the IAMCP, and you will see an announcement going out uh, today, that is uh, July 10th, 2009, uh, the IAMCP will meet making an announcement. And uh, we are going to um, put together a, a committee to investigate, you know, what this means, uh, not only to us, but to our, you know, partners. And that's going to be led by our uh, MIST team, which is our Microsoft IAMCP strategy team. And that is a, a committee that sits on both the uh, IAMCP International Board of Directors and also on the uh, America's board. And we meet with uh, uh, Microsoft uh, frequently on a monthly basis. We have one-on-one -on -one meetings and uh, conversations uh, once a month in Redmond with uh, uh, Microsoft uh, teams and representatives. And uh, what this committee will do is they will uh, investigate what the impact of this announcement is going to be on our, uh, on our partners. And we're going to you know, quantify this we're going to compile the um, you know results, and then we will uh, we will present that to uh, Microsoft. So we're going to handle this in a, a very professional manner. And uh, for anybody out there who's gone through MPN uh, changes, you know, before they'll remember when uh, uh, Allison Watson changed the MPN program, and you know there was an uproar by the uh, partners, and we did this very similar thing. We put together a committee. Uh, we solicited feedback from our partners and presented it to uh, Microsoft. And in that particular example, some of the requirements for the MPN program were uh, relaxed to give some of our partners ample time to uh, be able to uh, change. And then there were uh, other uh, announcements. And I remember meeting with uh, you know Phil Sorgen in regard to um, uh, partner and partner certification as it related to uh, partners having offices in multiple locations and that certification would be required in uh, every single location. And uh, we took that feedback uh, from our partners to Phil Sorgen and that um, uh, that requirement actually got relaxed and, and changed. So uh, on, on the, uh, on, on, based on, you know, some of the initial communication, uh, I, it seems very impactful. I know there's a lot of partners that will be, you know, impacted. We don't want to over, uh, you know, react to this. We'll handle it, you know, professionally. Our uh, Microsoft IAMCP strategy team will uh, head this up. An announcement will go out today. Uh, we are going to solicit uh, feedback from our partners. We'll actually quantify this and find out, you know, what this is going to mean to our partners and how much money it's going to cost them on a monthly basis now to uh, run their business and to replace the internal use rights licenses and and to pay for those licenses and then we'll um, you know we'll present that to um, you know Microsoft and and uh, you know then what what that's going to mean to our partners and you know what they'll they'll do as a result of this and how it's going to impact their business and how it'll impact their you know productivity and I'm sure that Microsoft will uh, do the right thing as they've done before in the past. Uh, when they've announced uh, MPN changes that have uh, greatly affected our IAMCP members and the Microsoft Partner Channel. Okay, are there other um, areas where that that strategy team is doing research or putting together um, findings right now? I mean, the things that come to mind for me would be um, some of the decisions around app source and um, uh, you know some of the what is it sort of like the the, the fee or the the sort of not rebate <laughs> the fees sort of the Microsoft is taking on sales via app source and then also some of the support costs for CSP I mean those are all very impactful I think to some partners um, in a direct financial way you know with with pay paybacks to Microsoft are those the types of things that the strategy committee typically looks at the strategy team yes we haven't received a lot of feedback about those issues but i think uh, or those concerns i should say but i'm sure those will come up in these uh in these conversations as it relates to the um internal use right licenses mm. but but yes anything um you know we, we have things that come up all the time that are ad hoc where you know partners will say hey listen um this is very impactful not only to our organization but to other organizations you know can you please bring this up with microsoft at uh your your next meeting yeah let's put it on the agenda let's get it uh you know let's get it on there and let's you know bring it up so you know microsoft typically welcomes the uh you know the feedback and they're concerned about you know their partners and how uh, uh you know the partner program does uh, you know affect them and um 
you know, sometimes we, we can have an impact and get things changed. And sometimes, unfortunately, we don't. But our, our job is really to just uh, uh, communicate that feedback, get that over to, you know, over to Microsoft. And we rely on our partners to tell us what's important to them and what is, uh, you know, impactful. And I think some of the things that you just mentioned haven't come to fruition now because some of the partners are a little bit um, uh, behind schedule on getting their apps to, uh, you know, app source. But I think as time goes on and they uh, start, you know, getting apps that are on there, then then that'll become more and more apparent. Um, yeah, and watching for the sort of the... the... I feel like partners, just to, just as an aside on AppSource, are really sort of watching and waiting to see what kind of um, really material impact Microsoft can demonstrate with, with AppSource. I mean, the push seems real in terms of trying to get partners to uh, publish uh, publish solutions there, but I don't feel like partners yet understand exactly what, what the impact is going to be, um, even though I know Microsoft is still working on sort of using it in, in, in various ways and centralizing around around it, right? Would you say partners are, are waiting that sort of waiting and waiting to, to learn that? Well, it's just it's just like you said, I I, I don't think people I, I don't think the partners understand it yet. Once they figure it out and they're gonna go, Oh my God. But you know, the bright side is here that um, you can make money while you're sleeping. So while you're sleeping you can be right. making money and if you have an app on app source people are downloading it. Are you willing to pay for that? And I think every partner would say, yes, I'm willing to pay. It just comes down to, you know, how much. So it's a service. And like you said, uh, if the partners do their job and get their apps on app source and Microsoft um, is able to, you know, promote it and drive people to these uh, apps. Theoretically, you would be selling, you know, products and services that normally you wouldn't be, uh, you, normally you wouldn't be selling and you would have to market, you know, on your own and you would never have the resources that, you know, a company at the size of Microsoft has to, you know, to market these apps. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Once people's, uh, bank accounts start dinging all night with uh <laughs> with new buys that'll get their attention i suppose uh more than more than probably <laughs> any other slide or power you know program absolutely. name <laughs> absolutely absolutely and I, and I know what's happening for a few i mean i i i know there's been a long trial of of, of the commerce model for app source and I, I i that's something i need to look into more too because i i know it's been it's been in practice for some very select group of, of vendors um but i don't think it's moved out more broadly yet um so i'm sure partners are eager to learn more about that right right yeah, yeah. absolutely and then, and then, and listen, this is new to everybody and everybody's learning as they go. And uh, not only will the partners need to make adjustments, I'm sure Microsoft will make adjustments and uh, and 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 this will, uh, you know, this will change as, uh, you know, partners start to, um, you know, transition to this new uh, to this new model. Uh, well, Jeff, thank you so much for, for taking the time today. It's always um, great to sort of hear from you and get an update on, on, on where things are at, both uh, both your IMCP work and your uh, your your views from the from the dynamics channel in particular um thanks for joining me i hope i hope i can catch up uh sometime soon after the uh, the inspire event um to sort of hear hear your take on it uh down the road too absolutely thank you for your time it was good it was informative i even learned a few things on the call for <laughs> and we'll be sure to uh <laughs> we'll, we'll link to a couple of the things you mentioned today the um well i mean imcp's you know website and the inspire material um and maybe that announcement around uh, around the IURs too. Absolutely, yeah. As soon as I get that, I will uh, I will forward that to you. Awesome. Well, uh, well, thanks again, Jeff. You're welcome. This has been another episode of the MSDW podcast. My thanks to uh, Jeffrey Goldstein for joining me today. If you want to get in touch, reach me by email, jgumpert at msdynamicsworld.com. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World signing off. <laughs>